Welcome folks, Technivorous here. This is Kira. Now Kira is a 3D object slicing application. It's used in conjunction with your 3D printer to make almost anything. But how does it work? Stick around and find out. We'll go over each setting one by one, each in five minutes or less. And be sure to bookmark this playlist and hit that subscribe button. Please feel free to share. It helps us out a ton. And now without further ado, today on Kira Settings in 5 Minutes or Less 2021 Edition. Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. Welcome back folks, Technivers here. Today we are looking at more Kira settings in 5 minutes or less. This is our 2021 playlist, so a lot of new information. Don't forget to bookmark this page and subscribe to the channel in order to catch all the future videos because we're going to cover all these settings one by one. Today we are taking a look at infill pattern so we're going to start off very easy we're looking at the first pattern and that is grid and as you can see it is exactly what it sounds like it's basically just a grid of lines similar to the grid support now it is important to note that the major difference between these patterns is going to be in your print time so if i'm using 15 percent density with the grid pattern and i use 15 percent density with the lines pattern I should be using the same amount of filament because it is the same density over the same size of the object's mass. So the only way you should use more or less filament is if you're changing the density. Now it looks like these are packed a little bit tighter than the other one, but these are actually lines. So instead of doing a square on each one or doing the grid itself, it's doing a line one way and then the next layer is a line in the other direction. So you can see that it builds up the model that way and works pretty well. Um, very, very simple infill, and this will save you some time because it's not overly complicated. As we start going down and getting to the lower infills, you're going to see that they have a lot more complex geometry, and it's going to take more moves to make the same shape inside the model with the same amount of infill density. So you can see these triangles are quite a bit larger than the grid pattern, but again, we are using about the same amount of filament. We're right at 14 grams. Let's go ahead and check out trihexagon see how much of a difference that makes we'll click through a lot of these and kind of check them out and you can kind of get a good idea of what's going on here but as i said most of this is um it's not structural it's basically to keep the inside of the model from or, or the top of the model from printing in thin air this is inner support in most cases it's not actually keeping the model held together or providing any extra strength Unless you have a pattern that is somewhat triangular like this and you're using a high infill density, that will have an impact on the strength of the part. So let's try cubic. We'll check that one out. And like I said, most of these look very similar or the same, but just keep in mind you're using the same amount of filament, 14 grams. You can see we're here again. Um, and this one is basically doing the triangle pattern, but it does it in a 3D shape. So it starts with small triangles, gets bigger, and basically creates these pyramidal shapes inside the object. Again, 14 grams of filament on that one. Let's go check out one of these ones down here. Um, this is the zigzag pattern. So what this is going to do is create a line in one direction, move a little bit, and then create a line back. And you can see it doing that here pretty nice pattern again using 14 grams now I know it looks like there is more plastic in this one than in the last one but it is using the same amount of weight the same amount of distance and it is the same infill density so don't let that throw you although it is changing our print time you can see with the zigzag pattern we're at an hour and 36 let's go back to the trihexagon that one is a little bit more complex and not the same move every time and it's an hour and 35 so we're looking at a nine minute difference because of the infill selection that we've chosen. Let's try uh, Cross 3D and Gyroid because these two generally take a little bit longer, they're a little bit more complicated. And now we're looking at an hour and 43 minutes, but you can see that the pattern is a lot more complicated in here. Um, this is one of my favorite ones if I'm going for structural integrity because it pretty much ensures that all paths through the model have a solid chunk of filament. So no matter which way you decide to slice this object in half, you're going to end up with pretty much connecting pieces on both sides, if that makes sense. So infill is a pretty simple one. And a lot of these settings here, we're just going to cover right now. So the connect infill lines we want, that's going to ensure that the lines don't leave any gaps and we don't have any holes in our infill. 
Connect infill polygons is not really necessary, but it works pretty well with a couple of the patterns. And you can see here that it is affected most by the infill pattern and the infill line multiplier. For line directions, you can put an array of directions in here. This is a list of integer line directions to use. Basically, it's going to tell it where to start the infill and which direction to move first. I don't really use this setting, but on particular models, I could see where it would be useful. So it's something to keep in mind if you have a really, really, really detailed item that you need to print in a specific way. Randomized infill start is basically going to it's like seam for your infill. It's going to make sure that you are starting in a different spot every time so you don't get any plastic buildup on one side of the infill. Um, that is basically it for most of this infill stuff that we're going to cover. We are going to cover a couple more of these settings here in the next videos, so stay tuned. But the infill is pretty self-explanatory, and knowing those patterns and which densities to use and when is going to be your most important part. You'll also notice that while this can be reloaded to the initial and this can be restored to the initial profile, uh, this infill line distance is determined not only by the pattern, but also by the infill density. So if I change this, it changes the infill line distance, and that's because the infill lines need to be further apart or closer together depending on the density in order to achieve the same pattern. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next one because we have a lot more of these coming up. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.